Good morning YouTube and today you join me on a garage update and the reason for this is due to unfortunately COVID-19 aka the coronavirus. We're all grounded, we've got 20 degrees sunshine outside, today is my birthday, I'm itching to take the new KTM RCA out that you guys have seen if you follow me on Instagram. So today we'll just be talking about the plans, what's happening to the fleet this summer. Hope you enjoy. So for those of you that don't follow me on Instagram, this is the newly purchased, well I say newly winter purchased KTM RCA R Acropovic edition. Only one of a hundred ever made worldwide. So I was hoping to be having a full review on the bike, but unfortunately, like I say, because of the current outbreak and the lockdown here across the world, unfortunately we are unable to get it out on the road. So super excited, but I'll run you through what service in and what I've done in getting it ready for 2020. Now the bike was a bit of a barn find, it hadn't been used for about four years, so it's only covered just under 8,000 miles. But because it hadn't been used, as soon as I got it back, I've gone through everything service-wise, which is gonna be your filter, your oils, your coolants, and just a good going over the bike to make sure everything's in order. Now I have got a brand new set of Metzler tires to go on it as well, so something super sticky, ready for the summertime. Um, but that's gonna be happening this week, and we'll put it through an MOT, so hopefully, nothing will be coming off of the back of that as an issue. Also, one of the first changes was the tail tidy. Again, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see that I have upgraded the tail tidy to my own sort of home build one here in the garage, and I'd like to say some better indicators. So it looks nice and OEM to me, just a little bit cleaner than the original tail tidy. Nothing really drama-wise to report other than the fuel tank. So if you do have an RCA and you're gonna service it by changing the air filter, when you remove the fuel tank, they have a tendency to expand so the holes don't line up. So if you are doing a service on it, I would definitely recommend loosening the rear subframe um, because it caused me an absolute headache. I thought something was wrong when I took the tank off. Maybe the frame was short, but a quick Google online, it turns out it's completely normal. So if you are gonna service it, like I say, just bear that in mind. Do not force the tank. You have to remove the rear subframe just for an air filter change. So the plan will be to do obviously a full review on the bike when it's on the road. Being in the workshop today, you can see how tunable the bike is. There are so many points of adjustment, the handlebar height, the rear subframe, the foot pegs, the gear, everything on this bike completely tailored to your riding position, which is really cool. And everything is put together really nicely, really well made. And it's nice to have the adjustable steering damper, all the shocks and dampers obviously adjustable as well, like you expect with most bikes, but it's certainly something I'm looking forward to, to really tailoring. Now, the plan for this bike was to be going over to the Nürburgring next month, early May. Unfortunately, who knows what's gonna be going on, but I don't think we're gonna be heading over there for a few months now, which is a shame. So we'll be doing some road riding. Obviously, like I say, we'll get some reviews on the bike. We've also got the RS250. I've had this for a few years now. If you followed the channel from the beginning, you'll see I did do a ride out video on it, but not a proper review. So this year, if we can ever get back out, I'll also be doing a full review on the Mark I RS250.
change the oil on the RCA. It's not as straightforward as the other four strokes in the collection. It's quite a complicated process. It's got three filters, two are steel strainers, and the other one is like a cartridge filter. Once they've been removed, clean the strainers, new cartridge filter back in. It's then fill it with three liters of oil, run it for about 20 seconds, turn it off, put another 600 ml of oil in it, run it up to temperature, check the oil level, should be about the midway mark. If not, refill up again so that it's at the minimum point on the dipstick, run up top and temperature, and then turn it off. But I did have fun obviously warming the bike up. Now I had heard these like to flame, especially with the full Akpovic titanium system. So I'll run a little clip of uh, when it was at operating temperature now, which would be pretty cool. So I'm looking forward to getting it out at night. So I've also got some other two-stroke bikes in the pipeline. My good friend Aaron has just finished rebuilding his TDR 250. It's been a full ground up restoration. He's the one who let me borrow the RG500 many years ago that we reviewed on the channel. So looking forward to getting out on that. Again, I was hoping it was gonna be something this month that would happen, but we just won't be doing any riding. It's not fair to burden the NHS with any unnecessary risks being out on the organ donors. So that's got to be pretty cool when we finally get that on the road. Obviously the Ducati unfortunately has taken a bit of a back burner with everything going on and potentially looking to build a new garage. I just didn't want the bike in a million bits. So it will happen, don't worry. Like the Clio and the BMWs, they all get finished. But ultimately I've got to try and build a better workshop down the bottom of the garden because I've got an asbestos roof which isn't great. So eventually this will all be pulled down and hopefully have sort of a double garage that we can keep all the toys in and tinker till my heart content. As always, always guys, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you give us a like and a subscribe. We've got plenty of cool stuff coming if we can get back out on the road for 2020. Thanks again.